Well, right now we can't deny what's going on around us. We, we should join in and be a part of what's going on around us right now. And uh, right now we have a tremendous movement um, to uh, call the, the nation to the Bible. Sorry, a great event happened yesterday in Washington, D.C. called The Return, when perhaps 50,000 people came. I think it would have been much more people except for the COVID-19 and the violence that has been happening in Washington. Uh, but 50,000 is a whole lot of people. Uh, very uh, great religious leaders, they all came to, uh, to call the nation to repentance, to call the pastors to stand firmly on the Word of God right now. And uh, what's happening in our nation, the elections, etc., it's, it's all around God. Now, I know that people will say, oh, it's not about God, but it is about God. It always comes back to God. And uh, now we have a new Supreme Court uh, nominee, uh, Amy Coney Bennett Bennett. And uh, she, a uh, uh, Barrett, excuse me, Barrett, and she was appointed, and, and she is a woman of faith. She's a Roman Catholic. And she was questioned uh, in order to uh, put her on the uh, a, a lower court, federal court, uh, recently. And of course, she was uh, questioned by senators, uh, the national senators, the federal government. And what they were hitting her on very hard was the fact that she's a woman of faith. This is a, this is a problem. And uh, it should not be a, a problem. Our Constitution guarantees that we have freedom of religion, freedom to exercise our religion. And uh, you, can, you can be a person of faith. It doesn't say what faith, but every, you know, you, you, any faith, believing in God, and you can serve in any capacity. And, uh, and so it comes back to God. Just what we were preaching about last week, uh, about God being first in the nation, one nation under God. That's who we are. And so this should never, never happen. So uh, we, uh, we, we know that she's right to life. And many of us, I think all of us in this room, are, are right to life. And, uh, and so that's a good thing for us, but that's not what it's about. Really, it comes right down to, she's a woman of faith. Can a person of faith serve on the Supreme Court of the United States of America? So when, when we get to that point, we have to call the nation to revive. And, uh, and, you know, I keep hearing people say, I'm so afraid God is going to judge the nation. Wake up. We're already being judged. The nation's already being judged. Now, it can get a whole lot worse, or we can, well, here, here's a verse some of you may recognize, Second Chronicles. Now, my wife asked me to, uh, to have a prayer for our Supreme Court nominee today. And she gave me this verse, Second Chronicles 7, 14, if my people which are called by my name. Now you've got to take this verse just in little contingents. Because it says, shall humble themselves. That's what we are right now. God is humbling us. We've gone through a pandemic. <laughs> We've gone through flooding. We've gone through all kinds of storms, wars. Uh, the death of, of, of many Americans all around the world. And uh, we have to realize that we uh, need to humble ourselves. God has humbled ourselves. It says we have to humble ourselves and pray and seek my face. Now this is the hard, this is really hard. Turn from our wicked ways. Wow. This is what we should be doing right now. If we want the return, we have to turn from our wicked ways and then will, will I hear from heaven, oh, excuse me, and, and pray, then will I hear from heaven, okay? And uh, will forgive their sins, that's good, that's grace, that's God's grace, and will heal their land. Wow. 
If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. Let us pray together. Robert, I want you to come up because you're a, um, a, uh, a powerful man of God. I want you to lead us in this prayer. I want you to pray uh, for our Supreme Court and for our government. I want you to, to pray for Amy Coney Barrett. Would you do that? Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I just ask that you will be with our, with our nation's leaders, Lord, and, and our Supreme Court, Supreme Court which in, interprets our, our Constitution. And there's a nominee, Amy, Amy Coney Barrett, and Lord, Lord, I, I ask that you will be with her and you will guide and lead her through this confirmation process. And Lord, that your will will be done. And, and Lord, uh, as we in this church are very concerned with, uh, with, the, with the life issue that, 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 that they will recognize the importance of every human life. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We ask that they're all really pull, pulling together as a nation, I hope. It should not go by uh, uh, one denomination or three denominations or uh, any ethnic or, or um, gender. This, this is, uh, I, I saw Representative David, I saw uh, the Graham family, but I also saw uh, Martin Luther King family. Uh, you know, sitting and praying and be taking prominent parts in the call to the nation to come back to God. This is a this is a cross the board call to all the people of God in America. Come back to God. Now, now as we look to Deuteronomy, it's, it just seems like that as I go to this, this is it's so fitting for America as we look at it. It's so it fits so well uh, in the struggle that we as Americans uh, are going through right now. We find that. Um, that in, because Deuteronomy means second giving of the law. Um, and Moses, who <coughs> received that up on Mount Sinai from, from God, and was, he gave it to the first generation of, of Israelites. Now he is 120 years old, and the, the, that, that generation has all died out. God would not allow them into the promised land because they were not obedient to God. They, they just would not uh, rise above uh, their, their past in Egypt and the, the things of Egypt and the, uh, the ease of Egypt that just didn't live up to it. And so um, now uh, Moses too, he can't, he can't go in the promised land. 120, he, he's led the people through the wilderness and now he's kind of, it's his farewell. And he's given them advice. And what he's doing is he's re-given the Ten Commandments. The very same Ten Commandments that our nation is founded upon. Uh, all our laws are really founded upon the Ten Commandments. The, it's the basis, it's the, it's the cornerstone of America. The, the Constitution was built, was written by men who believed in the Ten Commandments and built it on the Ten Commandments. And so uh, it's, very, it's very good for America. 3,400 years later, America is, has built itself on the same principles that Moses is telling the people that they must build Israel on. The same principles, the same rock that is God. And so, of course, we saw in all these last chapters that he tells them that, uh, that you have to follow the first commandment and put God on his throne. Well, he, God's on his throne, but you have to recognize God on his throne. Okay? God uh, will enable us victory over all our enemies. We must walk in God. We, uh, we, we saw it last week, the solution to the problem, all the problems of Israel is also the problems that we have in America. God demands that we put God in the throne uh, of our lives, our personal lives. We also must keep God on the throne of America. One nation under God. I am the first and the last, I shall have no other gods before me. Moses made it very clear they have to keep that if they want to, um, to uh, continue to grow. I, I want uh, Dan to come up. You're going to read out of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. Um, the first commandment is the, foundation, is the foundation for our nation. 
Uh, we have failed in both areas in America. Return to God, America. God is telling us. Now, uh, let's all stand for the reading of God's holy word. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. When the Lord thy God shall bring forth thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, thou hast cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hevites, and the Jebusites. Seven nations greater than mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them, and other destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither, them. neither shall thou make marriage with them. Thy daughters thou shalt not give unto his son nor his daughter shall thou take unto his thy son. It is a prayer. Thank you, Lord. If you give um, the pastor the message that you want us to hear, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. You may be seated. So we hear, we hear from God that, uh, that, that every enemy that confronts Israel, you're going to go out, the, the second generation, uh, you, you know, Joshua is going to lead you. Moses was not up to it. God's not, he, he didn't live up to the standard. Joshua is going to lead you into the land. You're going to come up against seven nations. Every one of these nations is stronger than you. <laughs> you know? They're going, to, they're, going to have, they're going to have walled cities. They're going to have chariots. They're going to have metal weapons. Metal weapons. Swords and spears. They're going to be a devastating enemy. Every one of them is stronger than you. You cannot win the promised land without God. That's what he's telling you. Now, that's kind of like how, you know, we saw last week that, that America, we have all the walled cities. And the chariots. And we even have tanks and planes and missiles and atomic weapons. And yet, that's not our, the enemy that can destroy us right now. We're being destroyed from within. It's the sin within us that's destroying us. And that is bigger than us. Just like the Gergesites and the Jebusites and the Hittites, you know, they're stronger. They're stronger. But, um, God will win it. So what they're being told is you step out in full faith and trust and as an obedient people of God and I, God, will defeat your enemies. And that's what we are still at today. We, cannot, we, can, we can build all the armies we want to. It's not going to win this war. And the war really begins with me. Now, each one of you say that. This war begins with me. Revival begins with me. You see? Your Bible begins with me. My little granddaughter is in, is in kindergarten. They told her a story about a pumpkin. <laughs> I love the story, but I heard it. And it's, you know how you, how you, know how you, 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 you take a pumpkin and you, you haul it out and, and you put a little candle in the middle and light shines out from it, you know? The children were told that their light cannot shine. God's light cannot shine out from them until they take the candle and they cut it open and dig out all that chunk that's inside the, you know, that, that, that pumpkin. Get it out. And that's the way it is with us. Our lights cannot shine until we get all that junk out of our lives. Sin. Sin. And all the sin that besets America is so grave and so deep and goes back so far that uh, it's, it's such... We have, we, we have... First off, we have um, enemies like 
disease, cancer, heart problems, uh, and a myriad, myriad others of diseases that you and I have to fight every single day. And all of these diseases seem to be beyond our control and beyond our ability. We, we can't defeat them without God. In the end, you have to stand still and allow God to do the work. When your doctor comes in and you think, this doctor can heal me, the doctor cannot heal you. He can do all that God has given him. But in the end, it is God that heals. He does all that he can, but then God does the rest. And so we find that the enemy within us, as far as our, our illnesses, are, are, are still, we must lean on God. Accidents, drugs. You know, you know why the Alcoholics Anonymous meets at this church twice a week downstairs? And I listen to their meetings. And they always turn on a power beyond themselves, a higher power. And when they get mature, they realize that that's Jesus Christ. It, 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 what, what they realize is that this, this alcohol has them in its grip, and they cannot get out of it within their own power. They need a power beyond themselves, and it is God that will give them the victory. Isn't that true? It's the same way with alcohol. It's, it's the same way with drugs. You start out so innocently, and then you find out that it was a trap. It was quicksand. And you can't get out. Only God can get you out of it. And you have to come to a point where you humble yourselves and you call on God. And He hears you. But you have to do your part. And then He will do His part. The greater part is His. He'll get you out of it. Unemployment. Besets the land. Bankruptcy. You know what really besets our land? Greed. Sin. Greed. People, who, people will do anything to keep power. Keep their money. They don't care about you. You don't think they're only going to care about me. They don't care about you. And, you, and, and the only recourse is God. Charles Stanley said, if you do the right thing, God will do the rest. You do your part, God will make it work out. If you don't do your part, abuse, a lot of abuse in the homes, anger, people are angry, hostility. We see people out now in the streets, and they're angry, and they're angry. We don't know what to do with the people that we're afraid. People are afraid to come out of their houses. People are afraid to go shopping. People are, uh, people are afraid to put bumper stickers on their cars, you know? They're afraid, they're afraid of each other. America has gotten to that point. We, we need, we need, a, we need an intercessory hand from God. Alcohol, loneliness, depression, discouragement, mental problems, lawlessness, violence, war, death. And, 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 and amidst this, there is a raging lion called Satan. And he's putting this all together to destroy America. To make us all helpless before him. So that we'll all fall into this helpless rage and, and, and depression and despondency. That's, that's what the devil wants. Oh. Now I know a lot of you think, well, I, I, I'm behind this guy or that guy, and he's going to make it make, make it all better. But you know, what really has to happen before America can be great? America has to stand on God. America has to turn back to God. America has to find its roots again. Its roots are in God. We are a Christian nation. Well, we were a Christian nation, and we need to get back to being a Christian nation. If we want to have the victory, our families are falling apart. They're falling apart. You know, there's, there, 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 it's, it, it's, it's getting so that the young people don't even believe in family. They don't even get married. They don't believe in family anymore. Without marriage, you have no family. 
If you, without God, you don't have the family. The one, the one thing that God gave us uh, that came out of uh, out of the Garden of Eden, the one institution that was there was the family. And it was a God-given gift. God took Eve out of the side of Adam to be his partner, to love and to be loved and to pass that love to the next generation and teach them how to be loved and to be loved. It, it, it is so important. It is so important. The list of enemies that shall attack thee, threatens to destroy man, are almost innumerable. <clears throat> but there is hope. <laughs> the hope of God's presence and power. That's what we need. We need to be in prayer, as Billy Graham said. He should have preached less and prayed more, but I think you need more of his preaching too. Don't you? I wish I could hear more of his preaching. But we need prayer. We need, to, we, need the, we need the people to cry out to God. I heard Martin Luther King's uh, niece pray for America. It was a beautiful, beautiful prayer. I mean, it would bring me to tears. How much uh, she loves America. How much she loves the people of America. All the people of America. When I hear uh, all the, the tension between Races, it, it, it breaks my heart because we love each other and we're really only one. There is no races. One people of God. All descended from Adam and Eve. All, all descended from Noah. You know, God, when we get to heaven, we're sure going to be surprised. Those races are sure going to be surprised when we get to heaven, aren't they? They're going to be so shocked at what they find. <laughs> We gotta love each other. We gotta feel a commonality. We're Americans. Americans. Yeah. So the reason why all the enemies of uh, the promised land must be completely destroyed, <clears throat> it's a picture of spiritual separation. It, the, these peoples were, were worshipers of of uh, uh, of of satanic images. They, was, they, were dem they, they were taking their babies and, I don't want to tell you this, they were, they were killing their children in, in, in terrible ways, thinking that, that the, you know, the, the more painful it would be, that's where we get the word uh, Sheol, or hell is from the valley where they used to take, a, take babies and, and dedicate them to their gods. And then they would take the babies and they would, uh, Put them in the in the in the in the buildings in, into the walls of the buildings as they dedicated the, the buildings. And God said, "That's enough. You can't have these people in the promised land. You can't have that." And what He tells us is, "It's enough. You're, you're destroying your your own bodies with your sin. You know, you, you see it every day. People dying as a result of their sins." And He says, "Listen." It's enough. Cleanse yourself. Heal yourself. And then God will heal the land. And so, when Joshua does take over from Moses, he's going to bring the people through a series of rededications. Circumcision, etc. But even more than that. A time when they, they must get before God and say, God, you are on the throne of my life. That's what I did when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. So God, you are on the throne of my life. From now on, it's your way, not my way. You're first in my life. Whatever I do, I need to bring it to you first in prayer and say, is this what you want me to do? Is, is this where you want me to be? Before I marry Pray to God, is this the woman that you want me to have? You know? When I went to, to, to school, I said, is this the school, God, that you want me to go to? I did do this. That, that's, that's because God's on the, he's on the throne of my life. I hope. Not always, because I've got to tell you something. I'm a sinner too, and I really need to get on my face. I had a friend, he, he used to horrify, he horrified his whole congregation, because he used to wear these beautiful white suits. And one day he just got on the floor of the church and just laid down in this beautiful white suit. You know, the ladies are saying, oh, 
you know, you know. Look at he's doing to his suit. But he got down, he humbled himself before God, dirty to suit, in front of the church. But he said, God, forgive me for I have sinned. Well, that's the, we need to get on our faces. We need to humble ourselves. We need to recognize it. It's not the next guy. It's not the guy down the street. It's not the guy around the corner. It's not the guy over there. It's not the girl over there. It's me. I need to cleanse my life before God. The, re the result of obedience is, is wonderful. So we see um, the judgment will come. Each of us must repent and clean up our sins. Our nation has, has sinned, abortion in the worst of them, lying and racism. We need to get rid of these sins in our, in our nation. Abortion is a sin. It's murder. It really is. Racism is a, is a travesty. Horror. We, we need to get rid of that. We, we can't get rid of that by one side trying to... It's all of us together. We have to work together to do this. Together. Together. We need to defeat these things. Lying. I hear so many lies in the nation today. So many... So many... Oh, hold. You want to believe... You, don't, you want to test to see if I'm telling the truth? Just listen to the politicians. The only time... That, well, every, when do they lie? Every time they open their mouths. So it seems like you want to see a lie? Watch a politician open his mouth. It's just that way. It's, it's, it's getting so, so terrible. I, I don't want politicians. I want men of God and women of God leading the nation. Not politicians. No, I, I, want, I want basic good people. I want people who, who, who the light can shine through them. The, the, the drug business in this country is huge. It's a billion dollar industry. I mean, you think Walmart is the biggest industry in America? No, it's the drugs. You just don't see it. But it's out there. We have a drug culture that's, that's destroying America. I personally have lost so many friends. Just think about it, you have too. So many friends die from the drug business. Think they were. They thought they were getting away with something, and they weren't. Corruption in government. Oh man, we pay taxes. Goes right in people's pockets. Doesn't go to the people. It's, just, it's really horrible to see what's going on. You know, we fight wars uh, to make to make to make uh, companies bigger and richer, and and yet the young men die, and the young women die. We we have so many. We we need to repent of our sins. But judgment will come. It says in verse 3, Neither shalt thou make marriage with them, that thy daughters thou shalt not give unto the sons, nor his daughter shalt they make laws unto thy sons. But they will turn away thy son from following me, that thou may serve other gods. So the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and destroy thee suddenly. If, if we turn to other gods, whether that because of a, a wife or because of a lust that's, that's of the flesh. If we turn to other gods, you can expect judgment. And that's what's happening in America today. And now we're all surprised. Well, where is this coming from? What's happening to America? This isn't the America that I grew up in. That's what we're saying. The older people that are saying, well, my age say, what? this isn't America like I had America. I want, that, I want the old America for my children. I want the old America for my grandchildren. Where did it go? Our sins have found us out. And we passed our sins to our children and to our grandchildren. A Christian should marry a Christian, by the way. Be equally yoked. You think, well, I, they'll change after I marry them. No, they don't. You know what my father did? My mother said, I'm not going to marry you unless you go to church with me every week. He said, okay, honey, I'll do it. And he went to church with my mother until. every week until she married him. Uh. I never saw him in church until my sister was getting married at the age of 18. That's, That's the first time I ever saw my father in church. He used to drop us off at church and go across the street to the drugstore where he would get himself a nice milkshake or something, and he'd read the magazines until we got done, and then he'd pick us up. Now, later on, he did come to the Lord. 
Do you want to wait 40 years before your husband goes, goes to church with you? Just beside you? No, no you, you are supposed to. And, and what about the children? You know? No, I was very fortunate because my mother, she was 20 minutes early sitting right there every week. You know what I mean? She was a great witness to, to us. You know? And my father had no, no, no problem with that. And he's, he paid to send us to Sunday school. We went to Sunday school with the nuns and all that. But he wasn't going. You, you, God says, marry, do not be unequal. Uh, uh, do not be unequal. Okay. Marry someone who knows the Lord, and then you can raise your children in church, in Christ, and see in the next generation be with God. And you know what? The chances of, 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 of a woman raising a child to know God, to go to church without the husband, is very slim, believe it or not. Women who do this are, are really godly women. But Charles Stanley's his, his father wasn't there. She, he was dead. And he, his mother raised him to be a Christian. It's very hard to raise without without your husband to raise your children to know God. It's really hard. The, the children need to see mom and dad sitting together in church. We need to put together our families. Moms and dads, turn back to God. And if you're not going to church, come to Christ and and begin to bring your children. I, I promise you this. If a man and woman pray together regularly, they will not divorce. You will have a happier marriage. You'll be filled with joy and happiness as you see your children grow up to in the Lord. You, you do all you can. Now sometimes the child will, will stray away, but if they have that witness and testimony, it is very likely that they will come back to God. They need, uh, you, you need to be equally yoked. Raise up your children to know God, because judgment will come. Now, I'm going to skip up here a little bit because of time. But what will what will happen when revival happens in America? What would happen in Israel? If revival would happen in Israel. We have a chance to excel by revival right now. That's what I'm going to say. If we turn back to God and be obedient to Him. If we return to the churches, because the churches are empty. I'm not, I'm not saying that all of them, but many, many churches are empty. You look at the percentage of people in the community. If everybody actually came out to church, we wouldn't have churches to, big enough to hold them all. All the people that should be in church, we wouldn't be able to hold them all. The church would be overflowing out into the parking lots. Oh, I look forward to the day when that would happen. If we revitalize our families and our marriages by, by coming to Jesus Christ and worshiping together, God will love and bless America. It says, verse 14, if you do these things, thou shalt be blessed above all peoples. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take... You want to make America great again? I mean, really great again? Go back to the churches. Bring your families back to the churches. Worship God. Watch what God will do. He promised Israel, I will make you great. I will put you above every other nation on earth. Now God has blessed America in a very special way. We came here loving God. And families came here to raise their children to, uh, up to know God. They didn't want the government telling them how to raise their children. They wanted to do it themselves. That's what the pilgrims were, were, were talking about when they came to America. It wasn't for economic uh, 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 advancement. They came for religious reasons, for their families. And God honored that. Just as he honored it with Israel. He told them, if you'll come back. He told this generation, if you'll honor me and put me first, that you can defeat those seven nations, each of which is greater than you. And Joshua went in there, and the walls fell down, remember? Yeah. And he conquered those, that land, and they occupied the promised land. If we will turn back to God, if we'll revitalize our marriages through Christ, in Christ, God will bless this land and he will indeed make America great again. The promise that Moses here is repeating. God gave him this promise. He's repeating it as he gives the Ten Commandments to, uh, give to them the second time. He tells them this comes with a promise. 
a promise of blessings from heaven raining down upon you. So the choice is ours. Do we want to continue as God is judging us and grinding us down and eventually allows America to disappear? Or are we going to turn back to God, revitalize our marriages, revitalize the churches, put God on the throne of America, one nation under God, not just in word but in deed, and be blessed by a holy, mighty God who can do it. He can defeat the enemy. He can give us victory. He can give us peace and, 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 and a lasting joy. Trust. You trust in Him? Truly just trust Him? I remember when I got married. <laughs> you know when you get married, you have to date in a while and you don't trust anybody. <laughs> you don't trust any girl or anything like that. When I got married, I said, wait a minute. i got to put my full faith and trust in my, my girl. This, this girl, I'm going to trust her completely. I'm going to trust her. I'm going to go away for months at a time because I'm the military. That's a brand new time. i got to trust him, trust in her completely. I'm not even going to worry about it. Go away. I don't have to worry. My wife's trust me. Well, do you trust God? Will you put, put your full faith and trust in God and say, God, you said it's a sin to worry because when you put your full faith and trust in you, we don't have to worry. Are you ready to do that? Put your full faith and trust in God, and God will do the rest. All right? Just full faith and trust in God. God will do the rest. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you for your presence, your power in this place. I thank you for every person that's here. They came here, Lord, not to hear me. They wanted to hear from you. Oh, Lord, I pray that the words of this book will resonate in our hearts and that we can grow closer to you so that we can bless you through our worship and through our, our, our um, dedication to you. And then, Lord, you can bless us by your love and guidance. And we'll give you all the praise and glory for this. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you're looking for purpose in life, open this book. If you want to know how to live your life, open this book. If you want to talk to God, it's as easy as getting on your knees. In fact, you don't even have to get on your knees. You can pray, stand up, God, wherever you are. He wants relationship with you.